my dear frontline, receiving this note will signify that the end has come. My tenure on earth has been terminated. I would like to thank all the people who have supported Frontline since 1987 through present time. It has been a remarkable journey, a journey that has spanned over 33 years. Well over a million meals served to the population of Skid Row, downtown Los Angeles. A miracle for sure. Children have come and became adults. Adults have passed on. Seasons have come, seasons have gone. Thousands of souls have been touched. The power of honesty, purity, unselfishness, love, the four absolutes of life itself have prevailed, steadfast through the years, paying homage to the master himself. What an honor to be a part of his miracle, to be a part of the design, an accomplishment propagated by so, so few for so many. The ideals of four absolutes, grounded by compassion, understanding, tolerance, equality for mankind, the care for his flock. It never was about the food. The structure of love prevailed. I became a street people. I felt most comfortable in this treacherous area known as Skid Row. We are one in my participation. I have never felt fear. Certainly never, never felt fear. So to each of my readers, a warm thank you for all the years. Hold your donations. Frontline is officially closed. This is time to rejoice. We have touched the wonderment of his benevolence. Allow his vision to flow through each of us. And I wrote this to go out, obviously, after I die. When I came across it, And in some sense, it's apropos of how I am today and how I feel because I'm closing front line now. I wanted you to hear it because there's some good stuff in there. Again, the four absolutes. Again, paying homage to the master and what I stand for compassion, understanding, tolerance, equality for mankind. Those are my four staples, you might say, along with the four absolutes. So that's it. I thank you. I love you. during these 33 years, you met a lot of individuals, right? Oh, yeah. Thousands. You know. And, and many of those people have passed. But they made an adult, an indelible, indelible uh, impression upon me. And uh, everybody has a story. And I have all their stories. I have the story of life. I am so rich. I can't begin to tell you. Money can't buy what I have. So that's, that's how I feel. It's a good feeling. Sad, but good.
You've always said food was not what you were taking to Skid Row. Excuse me, what? You always said it was not about the food. Right. Never was. You also gave the people that you did feed the opportunity to get to know you. You didn't just hand out the food. No, that was what the whole thing is about. It never was about the food. Never. It was about the touch of one human being to another. And that's what lasted. That's what they care about. Mm -hmm. They don't care about the food. Oh, if they're hungry, they might, you know. But it was about, hello, Papa, hello, Ray, hello, hello, Dad. I, I meant something to them. They meant something to me, and they knew it. I mean, it's hard to explain. You can't go down to Skid Row and say, hello, because they won't accept you. Uh, they're leery, but they're not leery of me. And that's why I say I'm one of them, them meaning the people of the streets, not the homeless. There's a difference between homeless and Skid Row. Uh, I've always made that distinction. They think it's uh, the homeless, and I, it's not. Skid Row is a separate society, all its own. They have an echelon of hierarchy, to low archy, low archy. <laughs> I don't even think it's a word. So that's it. And you offered them some form of contact that they couldn't get from anybody else or didn't get it or it wasn't available. Do you feel that you crossed lines to be able to touch them and reach them? I crossed the line by being a part of them. Them meaning the people of the streets. And that's where I crossed the line. And it takes time. It, it takes persistence. It takes love. Compassion, understanding, tolerance, those are all the words I stand for, I stand for. Uh, I, I, you know, I just don't stand for food. It's a whole different thing. So sometimes people may hear somebody like you or just somebody in general talking about a group of people and just because you're saying that's a group of people, the people of Skid Row, they may think that you are considering them to be different than you or separate from you. No, they're not. We are one. And uh, it's very important not to make a separation. If, if I separated it, then I would be... I don't know what I'd be, but I never saw a separation. I saw God's kids, and they saw me as the same thing. You know, they were circumspect in the beginning, obviously, but uh, after 33 years, you know, after 20 years, 10 years, 10, 20, mm -hmm. 30, no, no. They know I'm for real. And they care about me. They're glad to see me. When you share your story, when you tell these stories, you obviously tell them from your perspective, but it wasn't just you who did all the work, was it? Who did all the work? It wasn't just you. Who helped you do all this? Oh, 
I had legions, legions of volunteers, e even downtown. Uh, you know, they would help me. Oh, it's impossible, impossible for one man by himself to serve one million one hundred thousand meals in that area. Impossible. So I, I couldn't make that many meals without help. So the volunteers. Hundreds, thousands, kids, they grew up. The old volunteers I had all passed away. That's sad. But if I had a 65 year old or 70 year old, 33 years would make him 103. So I see him go. And I'm going to go soon. It's okay. You live your life by these four principles. Did you go downtown and try and preach that? No preaching. Never. It's my actions that counts. How do I treat them? How do I say hello? How do I say goodbye? That's what I do. It's by um, example. And uh, never preach. But I am those principles. Well, I am those principles not by saying the word, but by being the word. And there's a difference. And preaching is it's good, but they're words. Behind the preacher, I want to see if you walk the way you talk. And uh, that's important. It's important to me, and obviously it's important to thousands of people on the streets. Did you have some sort of need or desire that things change downtown and that your actions change that? I wouldn't change one thing about downtown. I wouldn't. I don't want to rehabilitate. I don't want to teach. I don't want anything. I accept the people of the streets, the way they are, how they are, and what they are. And that's it. I give for the purity of giving and ask nothing in return. Period. End of statement. I don't want to get them well. I don't want to get them off drugs or liquor or anything. Nothing. Not on my agenda. I have no agenda. I'm a zero kind of guy. And that's okay. If somebody doesn't accept me as a zero kind of person, it doesn't bother me. Not in the least. That's an interesting statement to make, a zero kind of guy. What does a zero kind of guy mean? What does a zero kind of guy mean? There's nothing to him. Zero is zero. Nothing is nothing. And that's what I am. I'm just a nothing man with nothing special to my name. Doing what I can do. Supporting what I believe in, the four absolutes. Supporting compassion understanding, tolerance. Those are the things I support as a nothing kind of man. And uh, 
That's just what I support. But it's the action that counts. It's the action of compassion. It's the action of tolerance. Without that, no good. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing I say, if it doesn't make sense to somebody else, that's okay. It makes sense to me. I don't have to read the books to find out what somebody else thinks. I do my own thinking on my own time. But where do you get your inspiration? I get the inspiration, you want to say, from the power, from the power of the master. That's all. I don't know anything about him. I don't know anything about how he works or what he does, or, but he guides me 24 hours a day. You say, well, well what if, I don't know. I cannot define him or anything. Do you question the inspiration? Do I question? The inspiration. My inspiration? Of course not. There's no question. There hasn't been a question. This is the year 2020. I haven't questioned that power at all since 1986. That's when I fell into his grace, period. I said from that moment on, and it had not been easy. Make no mistake about that. There's been a no bed of flowers. It's been difficult all the way. And pain and turmoil. If I knew 33 years ago, or 34, what was in store for me for this journey that I took, I would not take it. It's too much. I mean, even when I think about it now, oh, I mean, uh, it's horrendous. People will ask you, aren't you proud? Aren't you happy that you did all this, that you brought all these people together to feed the homeless? the people that needed food, aren't you happy and proud to do that? That's, that's a personal feeling. And I have no personal feelings about this. I am guided, it's directed, and I just followed the tracks. So I take no credit for this. Uh, and certainly I am not happy. I'm not a happy man. Uh, there's a great sadness inside me and a loneliness that's been there all my life. So, and just because I feed a few people doesn't make me happy. And I'm not happy at their expense. And even now, you've been in the hospital you're back home, you still get a lot of calls from people on Skid Row and I volunteers. I get them, 25, 30 calls a day. A lot of people. When people call you and say that you inspired them, what more do you have to give to them other than just whatever they may have received already. I, 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 I don't respond to that. I, I got a most, I want you to read this letter, a most beautiful letter today. Oh my God, it brought tears to my eyes. And it was, it was, it was what I meant to her. She's married and got kids, so there's nothing between girlfriend or boyfriend. 
oh my God, it was a beautiful letter. And, and I got a box full of notes. I mean, about thousands, thousands of notes. And uh, when you touch the box, you can feel the energy of love. But that doesn't infiltrate into me. It doesn't make me good, it doesn't make me bad, it doesn't make me happy, it doesn't make me sad. It just makes me nondescript. And the people who are maybe on skid row, or people who you know, who are having a hard time because maybe they, they are addicted to alcohol or drugs, and they call you, do you try and change that for them? No. Oh, my God. There's a man, his name was Billy. He was a beautiful man. And, and, and he was, he was at one time, 30 years ago, beautiful. But he was on Skid Row, and he drank, he drank. I brought him a bottle of vodka every week. And as the years passed, he would come in a wheelchair with his head slouched. And every day, every time I saw him, I give him a bottle. But he would say to me, "Ray, I love you." And he was slouched in his chair. He had sores on his body that his shirt stuck to him. But he'd be in that wheelchair waiting for me every week. And that man just adored me. And those the. Uh, uh, why would I want to change him? People may say, by giving them alcohol, did you make things worse? He was an alcoholic. And he was at the end of his line. And the only thing that he could bear was another drink. I gave it to him. And then one day, he died. He died in that wheelchair. I'm not going to deprive the man of that. And he gave what he had. He gave his love from that wheelchair and died. Was that experience that you had with them, was that a tragic experience? Was that a heartwarming experience? Was that an experience that you wouldn't give up? It was an experience. I'll have to let you fill in the blanks. When, when you would feed people downtown, over the 33 years, there were people that would be there almost every time you were there. Yeah, I was down there seven days a week. So I'd see the same people a lot. And then there, there must have been people that were there just for one time. Well, by going down every day, uh, the changeover is slow by going down there once every other week, you might get new people. But I, I was down there every day until I couldn't do that anymore, which is now, you know. But I'm directed, again, by that power three weeks ago. Uh, uh, the, the intuitive thought came to me, Ray, you're done. That's all it was. And I was done. I couldn't go anymore. And, and that's how I respond to the direction. And, you know, it wasn't give it a thought, maybe next week. No, you're done. In 86, when you changed your life around, when you changed your life to follow these principles, before that, your life was very different? Well, yes. Uh, 
it was different because, uh, I mean, it, it was different before 1969, but then before 1986, that span from 69 to 86, you know, I, I wasn't a bad person, but I wasn't a complete person. Uh, you know, my motives were good, but, you know, uh, I probably date too many girls at a time and lied and do a few things like that. I, I, I don't do those things. But I, was I above it? No. I was right in the mix. And the big significant change that you made in your life, do you feel that that should be easy for everybody? No. Can't be for everybody. They're going to follow their own, their own uh, will or however you want to put it. I submitted myself to God's will. So in 1986, I was done. I was cooked. I was finished. It was whatever he wanted me to do, I would do. And, uh, and I've been doing it ever since. You got to clear away the confetti in the head in order to listen to the power. Otherwise, you're, you're whistling Dixie. So what's this concept of not having any needs? Not having any what? Needs. Any wants or any needs? Because if I had a thought, if I did, I wouldn't have room for the thought of what he wanted me to do. So if I have a need, I'm going to focus in on the need. If I am needless or have no wants, I am only a servant of the master. That's my that's how it is in my head. I really don't care because I, I, am, I am subservient to the master, period. And whatever he wants me to do, I will do. He doesn't say every minute of the day, do, 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 do. You know, a big thing like closing the front line, he said, you're done. That was his words. I mean, or his inspiration in my head. The same as it was his inspiration in my head 33 years ago when he said, I want you to go to Skid Row. I listened. I heard it. I went. I didn't know it was for 33 years, but I thought it was one time. It happened to be 33 years of my life. It's a long time. So. You use words like prayer and, and the master. Are you a religious man? No. I believe in the master. I'm governed by his will. And I do what he wants me to do. And if you call him prayers, uh, those are three uh, viewpoints of mine, however you want to call it. Call them a prayer, call them whatever you want. That might be interesting to me. Would you mind sharing the prayer that you repeat every morning? Yeah, when I wake up at 12.05, now it's a little bit later because I sleep a little bit. I first, these are the prayers, three prayers, and they go like this. God, I offer myself to thee to build with me and do with me as thou wilt. Relieve me of the bondage of self, that I may better do thy will. Take away my difficulties, that victory over them may bear witness to those I would help of thy power, thy will, thy way of life. That's one. Second one. May I be shown all through the day what my next step is to be, 
and that I be given whatever I need to take care of such problems, especially asking to be divorced of self-will, dishonest, or self-seeking motives. Thy will be done. And the third prayer I say, every day is a day, and I go like that, every day is a day I must carry the vision of your will into all my activities. How can I best serve thee? Thy will, not mine, be done. These are thoughts which must go on with me constantly. It is a proper use of the will. Thy will be done. That's it. I don't do any more meditation. Pray. I meditate constantly. I'm in constant meditation. What have the results been in your life because of the prayer? How about 1,100,000 meals served to the denizens of Skid Row? How about that, for starters? How about hundreds, maybe thousands of other people that I talk to on the phone, for starters? How about everywhere I go, I say hello with love in my heart? How about that? I mean... Shall I end it there or continue on? <laughs> Every day is a day I must carry his vision. So what do I carry? I carry compassion. I carry understanding. I carry love. I carry honesty, purity, and selfishness. I mean, those are the things I carry. So... That's the package deal. I open up the package and that's what's in it. It's hard. It's hard to... I'm not saying it's easy, but, but that's all I got. I don't have anything. I don't have any money, I don't have any property. Well, I got this house, but I owe the mortgage. I, I I learned to live on nothing and I have everything. How do you figure? You know, I don't want anything, but I've got everything. I mean, nobody's going to understand that philosophy. Uh, I understand uh, the Western, what a Buddha, I understand that. I understand that method of life. I understand what they're saying. I don't know why I understand it, but I understand it. Uh, you know, I understand the Dalai Lama. But they're saying the same thing that I'm saying in a different way. And I, I said a long time ago, if the Dalai Lama doesn't say what I say, then he doesn't know what he's saying. So I read an article about the Dalai Lama, and it's exactly what I said. So. The track is right that I'm on. It's for others that I'm on this earth for, not for me. And uh, it's hard to transform the thought of self, all this, the bondage of self, to relieve me of the, to get rid of self so that I can do his work. And that's, uh, that's where I am. Does that make sense? Yeah. People who are going to hear this, see this on the film, they're going to say, he's crazy. But that's okay. Uh, so what? But they got to first, before they label me as crazy, they first got to feed 1,100,000 meals, <laughs> and then they can call me crazy. Thank you, Ray. You're welcome.
Thank you.